So you're thinking about moving to Boston, Massachusetts, but you aren't quite sure about the neighborhoods and where they're located. What are a couple pros and cons of some of the different neighborhoods in Boston? Well, in this video, we're going to answer those exact questions and we're going to open up Google Maps and I'm going to walk you through a Google Map tour. It's almost like a walking tour of Boston, if you will. So that way you can get a feel for Boston and our awesome city. This way, you have a good idea of what's happening and where things are located. So when you decide to visit to Boston, then you're going to have a, some great familiarity on the different areas. This way, you can focus on the neighborhoods you're most interested in. What houses do you want to see? So stick with us to the end so you know everywhere you can go. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than 1,000 houses. We get calls, texts, and emails from folks just like you we are looking to make a move in the Boston metro area, and I absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to make a move in the next 9 or 90 days, it doesn't matter. Give us a call, shoot us an email, or stop by at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information, and then we're going to reach out to you. All right, so the first thing I just want to point out is how big Boston actually is and kind of how weird it is in regards to, you know, shape, right? We got all this. This is kind of what people say you got. Little island over here, Brighton and Austin. You got another little island over here, Charleston. You got East Boston over here. So it's not all continuous, is really the point to point out. And then you got this uh, another island, if you will, in between Boston that just kind of makes it a little weird with this small little land bridge, let's call it right there. So, you know, Boston, it's segmented and you got a lot of different neighborhoods in all these areas. And that's really what we're going to take a look at. Now, one thing I just figure I will get that misconception right off the bat here is that Cambridge and Somerville are not actually technically part of Boston as well as Brookline, right? They're part of the Boston metro area, but they are not part of the city of Boston. A lot of people lump them together. That is incorrect. So let's start with Charlestown as the first place we'll take a look at. As you can see, Charlestown is right over a bridge here. You go right over here, you know, then West End, right into Charlestown. So um, Charlestown is, uh, it's a great, great neighborhood. Now I'm going to point out the monument, which is right here. Highly desirable. People love living around the monument. Another thing is you got Main Street right here. You're going to find some good restaurants as well as you're going to have your grocery store right here if you're living there. There's the Warren Tavern, which is a famous old tavern. Now, I'll point out the Navy Yard. This is considered the Navy Yard where you have all this waterfront. It used to be in old Navy Yard. It's a very creative name, right? You got the USS Constitution, the Navy's oldest warship. That's docked right here. Pretty cool to see it. It will leave uh, all the once or twice and go and, and do turn per year. One of the great parts about Charlestown is actually the ease of accessing 93 right pretty easy to jump in boston and go down 93 as well as getting up north going 93 so people do love that aspect you got the community college orange line stop this is what serves boston i think it's important to note that there really aren't any stops that are in the actual neighborhood itself so if you live in the neighborhood you're either walking to the community college stop or you're jumping on a bus and, and coming here or there's a lot of bus lines that will actually take you straight into boston and take you all over and around Boston. Now, something really cool if uh, commuting is up to you and is what you're going to do is also Charlestown has a ferry stop right here in the Navy Yard that will actually take you to Rose Wharf. So if you work in the financial district, it's a great way to get there and probably a lot more enjoyable than a train. So jumping over to East Boston, we're going to head over here next. As you can see, when it comes to East Boston, it's a lot of East Boston is taken up by the airport. So you have what we consider, like I said, large mass chunk here. That's the airport. You have three different neighborhoods in East Boston. You got Jeffries Point, Eagle Hill, and then you have Orient Heights up here. So those are your three areas that if you're living in East Boston, those are like the three neighborhoods that you're going to be, the three neighborhoods in the neighborhood, if you will, that you will be looking at. So a couple of things to point out in East Boston, you got Constitution Beach right here, cool little spot where you can sit here, get some race. Jeffrey's Point, really known for some unbelievable views of Boston skyline. You got Webster Street right here, which is just a really great street. It's kind of on a hill that just, I mean, some of the most immaculate views of Boston that you'd have. You have the Suffolk Downs development right here. 
going to be huge. It used to be an old racetrack, and now it's going to be mixed use, uh, residential, commercial, as well as retail. So this is going to be a really large development, which is going to do a lot in my mind for the neighborhood, as well as continued property value increases. One of the bad raps that East Boston gets is the airport, and everybody thinks it has really awful airplane noise. Now, I'm going to just point this out to you. This is what I've seen over the years. So this is the main runway that I find that uh, Logan uses, and so this is basically the line for planes coming in. So actually this part of Winthrop is where you get a lot more airplane traffic. The other runways that they're using a lot are these right here. So I mean, it's a small little section of East Boston gets it, but really it's over Revere. I had a house that was right here. This was my first home and they do have this runway line right here. So if it's going to affect East Boston, this is really where the plane traffic would be. I got to say when I lived here, it was only when I felt like it was really bad weather that I'd ever see houses come in over this part of, of East Boston. So if you're living over here, no plane traffic. If you're living over here in uh, Eagle Hill, no plane traffic. It's really just, you know, kind of called in this little section of area that you're going to get some plane traffic that comes in. Also, over in this part of East Boston right here, you'll get some incoming plane traffic. But it, it's really a misconception. It really isn't as bad as you think. Actually, over on the other side here is South Boston, and that's where a lot of the planes, you know, as they're coming in and landing, then they get quite a bit of plane traffic, which we'll talk about in, in a couple of moments. The last thing I'll point out is the commute around East Boston. So you got the blue line, which comes along here. You got three stops in East Boston, comes along, goes under the water, comes in here, jumps to State Street as the first stop in Boston, and then comes over here and ends in Bowdoin. So if you work at MGH, not a bad walk right here. If you're working downtown, not a bad walk utilizing State Street. So it's a really great stop. It's a newer line in the sense of there are newer trains on that line, which I always appreciated. But uh, I also found it's really a quick and efficient line as well. So let's think about when people think of Boston, ultimately the areas that they really think about is, is this area, I would say, when they think Boston, right? You got the Back Bay and you got Beacon Hill right here. So I figure let's start talking about those neighborhoods. So one of the great things about the Back Bay is this actually used to be a bay that they filled in. So as they filled it in, it's quote unquote a newer part of the city. And they made the Back Bay on grids. So, you know, this is the part of Boston that really makes sense from a street aspect of it. And it just, it, it makes the Back Bay a little bit more cohesive and a little bit easier to get around, especially if you're not from around town. Now you have Boylston Street right here. So if you've ever seen the marathon run, this is where they're finishing up right, right about here. So this is kind of like the main drag of the Back Bay, one way going towards the common. You got Beacon Street going this way, which is one way coming down. So this is a big throwaway. Now you got Com Ave right here. And I point out this because right here, this is called Commonwealth Avenue Mall. Awesome, awesome, awesome mall. And just park just to walk down. It's it's really enjoyable. The other aspect is, is you got the Charles River Esplanade right here. This is another great park, all waterfront views. Just a nice little joyous, you know, kind of stroll if, if you need to clear your mind. I'm, I'm a big water guy, so looking over the water is just awesome. Uh, you got the Public Garden, which is right here. This is the first botanical garden in the United States. It's a pretty cool spot. So you got the Public Garden right here, which I kind of consider this as like a mini Central Park. It's pretty cool when you're sitting here, you're looking over at the Boston the skyline. You, you just feel really tranquil area. If you've ever seen the swan boats, this is where they are in Boston. That's where you can rent a swan boat. And then you got Boston Common, which is, as you can see, a much bigger park. You know, just two great parks are connected. They're not connected because you do have a road that goes through there, but, you know, a lot of people cross through. So lots of parks here in, in the quote-unquote central area of Boston, which that brings us to Beacon Hill. So this is the oldest area of Boston and ultimately one of the most prestigious areas of Boston. So for Beacon Hill, you have the State House right here where all the, the state business is done. One of the things that people absolutely love about it is the proximity to MGH right here. You know, so if you're a doctor or, you know, nurse or whatever, so somebody who works there, very easy to live on Beacon Hill and just walk to MGH. You also have Suffolk University here at Beacon Hill. So you have a lot of soon to be law students that live in the area. It's a very big popular place. But when you think about Boston, and you see those pictures of brownstones with the cobblestone streets, right? 
that's most likely Beacon Hill where those pictures are going on. You do have Marlboro Street here, which is actually probably my favorite street in all of Boston. That's also, you know, brick brownstones and then brick brick sideways and gas lights. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's it's quintessential Boston. It's, it's what you're kind of think of when you think of Boston. From here, let's just jump over to the Fenway. And as you can see, these neighborhoods all connect to one another. So when people think the Fenway, they generally think of Fenway Park, which is what we got right there. But another thing is, is you got Boston University right here. And then you also have the Longwood Medical Area, which a lot of people in the Fenway works. So the Longwood Medical Area is right here. So a lot of people will live in this area and then commute into Longwood, which is some of the best hospitals in the country. You got Beth Israel, you have Brigham, you have Children's Hospital. I mean, it's just an absolute unbelievable place. Big, big, big area for a lot of people that work there. And then I'll just point out this right here. So all of this area, you can see the little dotted line right here. This is all Brookline. This is all a different part of the city. I and mean, earlier when I mentioned that quote unquote land bridge, this is really what I was talking about. So just this little section here is Boston, and then this is all Brookline, and this little section leads you to Brighton and Austin, which is next on our list to talk about. So let's talk about Brighton and Austin. So going from Fenway and going over this little land bridge right here brings us to Austin, and then you've got Brighton. Now, Brighton from a landmass is a lot bigger neighborhood than Austin. You know, one of the big things here is you got Boston College, so you got a lot of college students that will live in this area for BC as well as BU, and what they do is they just jump on the green line and it just takes them right into BU or over to BC. So a big college concentration area. In Austin, you have a lot of college students that could either go to BC, BU, and a bunch of them that can go to MIT as well as Harvard, which would be up here. So lots of con congregation, lots of college students or young professionals that are out of college and now commuting into, say, the financial district or something like that. A lot more predominant college housing in, in Austin. Brighton, you do get a good mix and, and a bunch of single family houses and families that live in Brighton as well. Yeah, I definitely kind of put Austin as uh, the college student capital over Brighton, but you handle a lot of students that, that live in both and as well as young professionals. Which also makes it fun because there's going to be, if there's young professionals, there's lots of bars and things of, of that nature for, for students to do. The thing I want to point out in Austin, because Austin's had a lot of development over the last bunch of years. And one of the things that you got is uh, New Balance. This is basically their, you know, world headquarters, which is right here. They put in this Boston Landing commuter rail stop, which takes you into South Station, as well as the Back Bay Station, so you could jump on here. But all of the New Balance World Headquarters here. So you got a lot of people that work here, but, and then you have that call it right about here, uh, Bruins, as well as the Celtics training aspects. So there's a lot there. And then you've had a ton of new apartment development over here in Austin as well. So this is Mass Pike right here. This is one of the main thoroughways that go through Boston and dumps people into Boston. So Austin is a little bit, a little less cohesive and, and put together because you do have the Mass Pike that goes through it. So now I just want to point out the green line. Now, Austin, the main neighborhood of Austin, doesn't really have a lot of Green Line or any really Green Line stops that service the Northern Austin aspect of it. But what's weird about the Green Line is that it does splinter off over here at Kenmore and in the Fenway. So you have a bunch of different lines. As a great example, here's one line. This is one line right here that goes in and comes up and, and over into Fenway. Here's another line right here in this service that just goes along, dumps in. And then, you know, here's going out into Wellesley Hills all the way out into Wellesley, right? Here's another line right here. So, I mean, as you can see, then comes in here, meets here. <laughs> you know, so, so you have a bunch of line, green lines. It's, it's the only one that really splinters, like some red line splinters off uh, once or twice, but it, it's a major splinter. It's also the oldest subway line in the country. So this whole part, everything you see here is above grade subway lines. So they are competing with cars and traffic and red lights. Definitely takes a little bit longer. When you get to about here in the Fenway stop, then that's when it goes underground and becomes a little bit quicker. But it's a pretty good access point. You got a lot of access in regards to Green Line and taking you into Boston. What's interesting about the Green Line, it does come through, comes over here, comes into Government Center, and then jumps up here through Lechmere, and then takes you into Somerville and actually ends up dumping you up at the Tufts Line. Now remember, Somerville 
and Medford, which is where Tufts is located, aren't part of Boston, but the Green Line does service them. Speaking of other lines that service areas that aren't part of Boston, so you've got the red line here, comes in, dumps you into by Mass General. So the red line is what services Cambridge, but and then comes through, cuts through basically, and comes down here and services uh, South Boston and uh, going into Dorchester. So since we just mentioned the red line, let's jump in here where the uh, red line crosses over and goes into Cambridge territory, if you will. So you got it coming in here. It goes over this way. We're getting on to the MIT stop, comes into here and goes over to Park Street. So you got MGH right here. So if you're working in Cambridge or living in Cambridge, very easy access point if you're working here. But also what's great about that is it does jump you over here to Park Street. And this is a major connection where you can connect over to, say, the Orange and Green Line. And it's just a great access point that, that you know, can also take you into downtown if you're working. And they just want to point out in the West End, so you've got TD Bank right here, which is where North Station is, is actually TD Bank commuter rail stop. So if you're in the North Shore of Boston, this is where and all those North Shore lines will dump you. One unique thing and very annoying thing about Boston is that North Station and South Station are not connected. So if you live in the North Shore and you're working in downtown, there is no seamless way where you go into North Station and then come to South Station and then get out here. So no, if you're in North Station, you either have to transfer over to one of the many other lines in order to get you there. Um, maybe you could transfer over to a line before this, or you're grabbing an Uber or you're hoofing it on your legs in order to get downtown. So that is definitely one of the negatives about North Station and North Shore is where the South Shore, this services Metro West as well as all of South of Boston. So from the West End, let's just jump over to the North End. When you think of the North End, a lot of people think of like Italian restaurants. We got a lot of them here. So you got Hanover Street, which a lot of it's really famous street with a lot of those restaurants are. And you got a lot of waterfront. And um, a lot of the condos that you'll see when you see waterfront, this is what they're talking about. But there is a new waterfront area, new waterfront area right here. And so all of this is really considered the waterfront. Now, what used to be is that 93 used to be above grade, and you can see it right here. This is where it used to go, okay? And it, it splintered the city. I mean, 93 was here. It was just suffocating the city. So they decided to do what was called the Big Dig, huge project, $15 billion. I think it was like 20-some-odd years. They basically buried all of 93 underneath of it, and it opened up all of this green space right here, which is made for a really, really awesome park. Uh, can never be built on. Actually, there's rules where shadows can't even be cast on this space, anything that's newly built. So it's a really, it's become an integral part of Boston and just a really great place to be. Now, I mentioned earlier Rose Wharf. This is where a lot of the ferry boats will come in from not only where I was talking about over in, in Charlestown, but here's the East Boston one, right? This will take you right over to here. But also there's the ferry boats from other areas like the South Shore as well as North Shore. And this is one of the access points where they will dump you. Okay, let's talk downtown. Really big area of Boston. A lot of uh, jobs and you know a lot of people commute here. As I said earlier, South Station, this is a commuter rail as well as a red line that services this area. You got a couple other stops right here. So you got Chinatown that feeds into downtown. You got the Leather District right here. The Millennium, which is probably somewhere right around there. That's one of the newer bigger buildings, $30 million penthouse. I'm going to say it was sold. So that was a record that that's where that is. Downtown also has the Tufts Medical Center and a big part of the Seaport District. I mean, you know, it's like kind of a big connection to the Seaport District. A Seaport District has come place on its own. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's actually part of South Boston, which very few people realize, but we have seen a ton, a ton of development specifically right around this area. Uh, you got a lot of retail as well as hotels. It's just, they have developed out the seaport. If you were here five, seven years ago, you don't even recognize what it is today. That's how much development has gone down here. And this has actually become the highest price per square foot out of anywhere that you can live from buying perspective in, in all of Boston. I mean, that's how premier of an area the seaport district has become. So let's talk about the seaport district a little bit more because the seaport district right here is actually part of South Boston. As you can see here on the map, they call it South Boston Waterfront. No one really calls it that. It's the Seaport District to everybody. So what's interesting about South Boston is, is you essentially have three neighborhoods. Like I said, this is the Seaport. And then you've got the east side over here and you've got the west side of South Boston right here. 
Now, I mentioned that the red line runs through. This is where the red line runs through. So what's really interesting is if you live on the east side of South Boston, and you're using bus routes in order to get over to your access points of the, the red line stops. You got two of them, Broadway, and then you got Andrews Square right here. So this is all subway, a little less convenient, if you will, to live on the east side, but it's definitely a little less city-like, more two, three family conversions, nothing that's really too tall, if you will. As I mentioned earlier in regards to the airport, this is definitely one of the higher traffic patterns of planes that are landing. I personally live right about here, I would say. I didn't mind it too much. The only thing that drove me insane is that I actually had my boat sitting here in the bay and, and it would get a little dirty from the exhaust from the fumes, but the noise wasn't anything considerable. Point out, this is Castle Island, really, really, really cool park, and you can actually walk this whole area, and that's a really cool, enjoyable aspect of it. You also have Carson Beach, which is all right here in L Street. So this is a popular spot in the summer, to say the least. And then you have a big, huge development right here, Washington Square. I mean, this is going to transform this whole part of South Boston. If you were here a couple of years ago, well, given another three or five years, you will not recognize this part of South Boston. That's how much it's about to change. From South Boston, let's just jump over to the South End. So we got South End right here. I'm going to point out Boston Medical, which is right here. So you got uh, you know a bunch of doctors and people that live around that area. One of the big things that people love about living in the South End, specifically in this area, the South End is the proximity into the Back Bay. Very easy to walk. That's why a lot of people love this part of in this neighborhood of the South End. This actually used to be, yeah, it's called the Ink Block. It used to be where they printed Boston Globe, Boston, well, Boston Herald, and then I believe the Boston Globe. Yeah, I contracted some work out there towards the end. I was sold. Now you have uh, some massive development, some beautiful, beautiful high and high rises that are there, plus a whole foods market that's there. So really cool area that has been there. You do have your access point to 93, so you can get a lot of traffic right here. Just kind of a heads up if you're looking in that area. One of the things that I'll point out about the South End is there is no mass transit from a subway perspective. It's all buses. And so that's something to be very cognizant and aware of if you, if you do live here. But it is easy to walk downtown. You know, you can jump on bus lines and, and jump into the Seaport District, which by the way, the Seaport District doesn't have any mass transit. It's called the Silver Line. That's not really a subway. It's a bus line. So just as it adds up, when they talk about the Silver Line, it's nothing special other than some big buses. So from the south end, let's jump jump down to Dorchester. Dorchester is huge. I mean, actually, if you picked up Dorchester in the neighborhood of Dorchester, this neighborhood is actually bigger than like the quintessential area where people think of Boston, like Back Bay, Beacon Hill, West End, North End. Like you, you take Dorchester and it is bigger than all of those neighborhoods combined. So let's talk Dorchester, home of Mark Wahlberg. Just fun fact. Neighborhoods in Dorchester, you got Savin Hill right here. Okay. This area, little area, really cool area. It's called Over the Bridge in Savin Hill triangle up here which is basically the south end south boston and dorchester kind of the areas where they basically collide you have the neponset area down here franklin zoo park over here but what's cool about this area is number one if you're if you're living off the neponset area it's really easy for you to jump on 93 you also have the red line that comes through here but it's also really easy to jump over to quincy and then also into milton so those are some of the perks of the dorchester again it is an absolute enormous enormous neighborhood with a bunch of uh, other uh, individual neighborhoods in there so you know just be prepared this this area of Neposit is a lot of area different than this area in Savin Hill and then this area in Dorchester Center so so we have a couple more neighborhoods left we're getting there so let's just jump over to Jamaica Plain very very popular neighborhood people love this spot in Jamaica Plain one of the things that I'll mention is it is serviced by the orange line right here so that's great you got to make a pond right there which is uh, also again another beautiful park that you can walk around we got a lot of great parks a lot of great greenland and boston metro market i gotta say one of the things that i've always noticed about to make a plane is well it's landlocked if you're trying to get to a highway you have to drive through quite a bit of city in order to get to mass pike or 93 i guess you can jump to nine and then that jumps you out to 95 but there there's there's a little bit of land rockness when you live in jamaica plain now jamaica plain is gorgeous you can get your condos you can get your multi-families but you can also get 
some really nice single families. So the neighborhood also offers you a lot of diversity from, from a housing perspective. A lot of people that live here also enjoy the proximity to the Longwood area, which is right above here. So um, from a commute aspect, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people choose to make a plane. Great neighborhood. So underneath Jamaica Plain comes Roslindale. One of the cool things about Roslindale and one of the things that I consider it, it's like it's an in-between Jamaica Plain and West Roxbury, which we're going to talk about. It, it has some of the best of both worlds. So you got, you know, West Roxbury right here. Like I said, Jamaica Plain was right up here. West Roxbury, we're going to talk about in a couple seconds, but it's a lot more suburb feel. This Jamaica Plain is a little bit more city feel. Roslindale kind of offers you a little of uh, best of both those worlds. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more dense and two, three family property condos, then you're going to find it in Roslindale, but you can also find those single family homes. One of the things that Roslindale, it is not serviced by one of the subway lines. It is serviced by the commuter rail line. So that is something to be aware of. Actually, it's the commuter rail lines that actually service West Roxbury, Hyde Park, Roslindale. As well as Mat Mattapan, you obviously also have city bus lines as well. But if you're looking for mass transit in the sense of train, then then you're going to be pigeonholed to the commuter lines. So since we're talking about Rosnell, let's just jump over to Mattapan. So Mattapan is right here. It is in between Dorchester as well as Roslindale. It also borders the town of Milton right down here. Basically, this water line is the order for Milton as well as Boston and, and the neighborhood of Mattapan. You get a lot of bang for your buck in this neighborhood. As I mentioned earlier, it's commuter rail stops that service this neighborhood. So you don't really have like the subway stops like the red line or anything like that. Then you have Hyde Park. Hyde Park is the most southern Boston neighborhood you can get. You get a good mix of single family houses here. It's it's a neighborhood where the commuter rail again that is serviced by that, but you can get some single family houses. You can get some condos here, but definitely not as much. You can get some great multifamily properties here. But Hyde Park, as I said, it's you got Mattapan up here, you got Roslindale right here, you got West Roxbury right here, you got Dedham right here, and then you got Milton over here. So it's kind of like hanging there uh, on an island a little bit by itself, but definitely get some great value for your money in Hyde Park. All right, two neighborhoods left. Second to last, we're gonna talk about West Roxbury. Now, West Roxbury is the most suburb neighborhood of Boston. I mean, if you want suburbia, right? If you want that single family and that white picket fence and you need to live in Boston. So for a great example, a lot of people that work in Boston for the city, they are required to live in Boston. Think teachers, police, fire for at least 10 years that I want to say. So a lot of them who want a little bit suburb feel, this is where they move in order to hit both those requirements. Again, serviced by the commuter rail lines. There are no other lines that service it. This is, you know, quote unquote, far from city center. When I lived in Southie, I had an appointment one day in Newburyport, which Newburyport is way up north. I mean, we're talking close to New Hampshire. It took me like 45, 50 minutes in order to get there from Southie. The next day, I had an appointment in West Roxbury for a single family for, for a listing there. It took me 45 to 50 minutes in order to get to West Roxbury from South Boston. No, it, it's a little bit landlocked. I mean, as an example, I went from here all the way through here in order to get to that listing. But it took me a long time which is if you live here and you're planning on driving into Boston, it's going to take you a long time. Relatively easy from West Roxbury to jump out to 95. And then from 95, you can jump up to Mass Pike and take you in into Boston or out to the Metro West going that way. So, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely the furthest. Well, I guess West Roxbury and Hyde Park are two of the neighborhoods that are both farthest from kind of that central city of Boston that we think about. And then there's Bay Village. I'm just going to do it this way just to really show you how small Bay Village is. And it is actually a neighborhood in Boston. But here it is. I mean, that is literally it. This is Bay Village right here. I'll zoom out a little bit so that way you can get a feel for actually how small that neighborhood is. You know, not much going on in Bay Village other than housing. There, are, I don't think there are even any restaurants in a Bay Village. I could be wrong about that one. But a the smallest, by far the smallest neighborhood in Boston. So that's just a quick run through of all the different neighborhoods. I tried to hit the the fine points of our fair city, Boston. You know, the big part is if you have any questions here then about specific neighborhoods or things that I missed, I'd love to hear it. Let's keep an open chat in, in the comments. Let's keep it respectful in regards to neighborhoods and areas. If you have opinions on them, because keep in mind that 
you might not think that a neighborhood is all that great, but there's a lot of people that call that neighborhood home. So I appreciate everybody's insight, but hopefully this will help you a little bit in, in figuring out the neighborhood that ultimately works for you. As you can see, Boston, it's got a lot to offer. No matter what feel that you're looking for, then Boston has it. Maybe it's the city feel on a high rise that you're looking for. Then Back Bay's got you covered. Maybe it's a suburb feel with that white picket fence that you were looking for. Well, West Roxbury is a place you can call home. Maybe it's a condo in a triple decker that's close to the action. Well, in that case, Southie's got you covered. We're here to help. If you're wanting to know more information or maybe even want to look at some of the homes that are available in Boston, do me a favor, reach out to us. Give us a call, shoot us an email, or stop by youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information and then we're going to reach out to you. Until next time.